what's up y'all it's your girl christian danielle and welcome back if you're new here welcome and if you're returning y'all already know y'all are the real mvps and whether you are new or returning make sure you like comment subscribe and what share so you guys in today's video we about to be making halloween t-shirts it is halloween season it's like we like three days in by the time y'all see this would be about five days in and today we are making halloween t-shirts but before we can do that i need some materials that i don't necessarily have or simply just need more of so i just left joanne's craft store and i don't even know why i went there because i'm not a joanne's type of girl they didn't have what i needed so right now i just pulled up to michael's i'm more of a a michael slash hobby lobby type girl i'm more of a hobby lobby girl but michael's is closer <laughs> so we're at michael's right now we're about to go in here and see if they have the paper that i need for my cricut joy machine if not then we're gonna wrench right around the kona to hobby lobby which is on the other side so hopefully we find what we need in this michael's and we can get back home and start working on shirts so let's go and you see y'all this right here that right there is why i mess with michael's michael's section already is way bigger than joanne's was and they have way more options and i also found these cute little ribbons i don't know if i should get this and this or just this one i feel like i can make this into something with the two of them but I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna get this one for now. But we'll see by the time I get to the register. I need to pop my brakes. This is actually not the right color for what I need it for, but I'm still gonna buy it because I feel like I can make something else with it for this whole October theme, even going into, uh, what is it, November? So I'm gonna get this just in case they don't have it when I come back, cause I'm sure I'm gonna come up with something else by then but I actually need a smart iron-on, which they don't have an orange. So what I'm gonna do is Google if I can use like the non-smart paper and just put it on a mat and cut it. Cause I don't know, I've never done that. I think you have to use smart products with smart products, but I'm gonna find out for y'all and see if I can do it another way. All right, y'all, so I'm back in the car. We just pulled up to Hobby Lobby because I did look it up you can use different material in your Cricut machine, but before I buy another material to go in my machine, cause I like to use what comes with the machine, I'm gonna make sure, make sure that they don't have what I need in the material that I need before I buy another material that don't go with the machine, if that makes sense. So let's go into Hobby Lobby and see if they have the Smart Iron On in orange. Okay, so they didn't have orange so we're gonna get this this is paper studio we're gonna get this we're gonna try it in our Cricut it's an iron-on and it's a solid and it's the, the orange that I needed okay y'all so now we have everything we need to make our t-shirts I went back to the store and bought some more of that smart iron-on I got black and white we got some ribbon and we have our t-shirts so now we're ready to make these Halloween shirts but before we get started, I'm gonna go over some of the major things that you're gonna need for this project. So number one, you're gonna need a die cutter. Any cutter that can cut vinyl. In this case, I'm gonna be using the Cricut Joy. I am gonna show you guys how to make a shirt without a cutting machine, but you gotta stick around to the end for that. Next, you're gonna need a design program. You can use whatever design program came with your machine, but I personally like to use Canva. I have Canva Pro, and for me, I find it just way easier and more efficient for myself. I do have a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. And if you're using a Cricut machine like myself, you're going to need Cricut Design Space to upload and print your image. You can design your images in Cricut Design Space, but like I said, my preference is Canva. And of course, you'll need some iron-on vinyl. I like to use Cricut products with Cricut products, and as you've seen earlier, they didn't have the color that I needed, so I did get another brand, and it's perfectly safe and okay to use another brand in your machine. And for those without a cutting machine, you will need some Halloween ribbon. 
And last but not least, and the most obvious, you're gonna need some t-shirts. So you'll get t-shirts your size and the size of whoever you're making it for. So let's get started. I've already designed all my images in Canva and now I'm going to upload them to Cricut Design Space. So I'm just gonna hit the upload button and you can just drag or drop your files. So I'm gonna open my downloads and just drag my files right in. We are going to click out of there and then we're just gonna go to simple cause this is a simple cut. Hit continue. And this is what I love about Canva Pro. I can skip this step cause my background has already been removed. And then I'm just gonna cut the image and upload and it, just like that my images are in there and you're going to do it one by one until you have all your images in the upload section so to start the printing process you're just going to choose one of your images add to canvas and then as you can see it's super huge so all you're going to do is just adjust and resize this until it fits the dimensions that you want it so we're just going to shrink that down drag it Grab that little corner, shrink it down some more, and move it. Now that I have it the size that I want, I'm just gonna hit the duplicate button, grab that duplicate, and drag it to the bottom. Then I'm going to hit the flip button to flip it around so that the little stem on the top is turned the opposite direction. Then you'll just hit make it and your images is preparing to print. So once you're here, you're just gonna make sure everything is right. It's on the mat. You're gonna put what size the mat is. And in this case, we don't need to mirror this image. You would mirror in the instance you were doing like letters or something. So then we're just gonna hit continue. And then we're gonna choose whatever material is closest to. So in this case, it would be the smart iron on. And then now you're gonna load your paper. Just like that. Once the machine is loaded, you'll hit OK, and then it will prepare your image and start cutting automatically. Once it's complete cutting, you'll just hit unload, and boom, your image is ready. And then you will follow all of those steps to cut your remaining images. As you can see, this image doesn't require a mat. Some will require a mat and some will not. It depends on the size of your image and the size of your vinyl. And as you can see here, I cut a whole slew of images. I have black images, white images, orange images, gray images, a whole bunch of them. So we're gonna get these prepared to add to our t-shirts. So to get them prepped, we're gonna be using a weeding tool, this tool that I have here in my hand. And we're gonna take that and we are going to lift the vinyl from the sticky backing. So as you pull, it'll start to reveal your cut or your design. And literally this has to be one of the most satisfying parts of this whole process. And I like to call this the peel and reveal. So this is what it looks like after I've peeled my designs and revealed what I have underneath. And you're just gonna go slow and just peel to reveal. And this is what it looks like now that I've weeded all of my images. We have peeled and revealed everything. And now it's time to add our designs to our shirts. All the shirts that you see in this video, I purchased from Hobby Lobby. This is a Gildan shirt and it's size large. And as you can see, it says 427, but it was not, it was only 299. Okay, so you're gonna start by laying your shirt down on a flat surface. I just use a TV table and I kinda centered it in the middle. 
And at this point, we're not gonna be applying heat just yet, but we are gonna take a few of our cutouts and we're just gonna start randomly placing them on our shirt just so that we can get an idea of where we want our images to lay on the shirt and how we want our shirts to look. And don't worry, this step is not a permanent decision. By the time you get to the point where you're using heat, you will have rearranged your images about 10, 15 times. Now, once you've got everything looking the way that you want to, we're now gonna go to the heat table and we're gonna apply our image with our heat. So this is what it looks like. This is what I've decided to go with. Now what I showed you earlier was a rough estimate of how I want my shirt to look. So now I'm just going to remove all of my cutouts and I'm gonna replace them, but this time I'm going to measure them before I replace them so that I can make sure that they're right in the middle and where they're supposed to be. So before we do that, I'm going to prep my shirt for the transfer. So I'm gonna take the Cricut heat press and I'm just going to heat up my shirt. As you've seen earlier, I do have the shirt on a heat pad. You wanna be using a heat pad underneath your shirt so that you don't burn the material below the t-shirt. Now to help with my measurement placement, I'm going to fold my shirt in half all the way down straight, making sure that it's in the middle exactly and each end is meeting up. And then I'm gonna take my heat press machine and I'm going to press the middle just a little bit, not a lot, but just enough to generate a line like you see right here. And that line should be directly in the middle. Then you're gonna use a ruler of some sort. I'm just gonna use my mats because I already used this to cut my material. Yes, the line is directly in the middle. Then I'm gonna move the mat over and measure down between two and two and a half inches down. Take my finger and just leave a dot there so I know where to place my image. Then I'm gonna hover my image right over the middle line so I know where to place it on the shirt. The line should go through the A, the O, and the A and the S on the bottom. So I'm gonna lay it perfectly right underneath that dot and right on the line. Now, whenever you're using any material that is not of the company of your particular machine, you need to always make sure you check the heat guide. So here I have a solid, my heat needs to be set at 280 to 315 and it is a warm peel. So now we're gonna bust out one of our Teflon sheets and we are going to lay that right on top of our image. Then we're gonna take our heat press Place it right on top, hit the start button, and press for 30 seconds. And our first image is ready to go. So I'm not going to peel my image just yet. Instead, I'm going to take some scissors and I'm gonna snip off the ends of the plastic peel as close to our cut as possible. That way I can lay down my other images as close to the peel without overlapping the plastic pieces. Then we're gonna go back in with our Teflon and we are going to press the left side. Then we're gonna proceed to finishing off the right side of our shirt following all of the same previous steps. And there we go, nice and warm. And now we can move on to the second most satisfying part of this whole process, peeling the transfer strip. And now that we've peeled and removed all of our transfer strips, this is what our shirt looks like. Super duper duper cute. As you can see though, the web went from gray to white. I don't know what was up with the gray. The gray was not sticking and it's kind of confusing because that was the Cricut paper, but our shirt is still cute, so we all good. Then after that, you're just going to repeat the process for any or all of your remaining t-shirts step-by-step with all of the directions that I just showed you.
Now for those of you without cutting machines, I'm gonna show you a quick, very quick and easy way that you can make a Halloween shirt. So first you're gonna need a shirt and some plastic. Here I just have a envelope that was laying around my room. I'm just going to cut the sides and open it up. And what you're gonna do is you're going to line your shirt with whatever plastic that you're gonna use. You could use bubble wrap, you could use an envelope like you see me using here. You can use a trash bag. <laughs> it's literally whatever you have. Then I'm gonna take that ribbon that I bought from Michaels. You can use whatever Halloween ribbon that you have. Next, you'll need some fabric glue. I'm gonna use the Super Tight Fusion Track Adhesive, which dries clear. Then I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm going to position it where I want it, right along the shirt. And I want it to hang over just a little bit, so I'm gonna cut it right in the middle of the two words. Then I'm just gonna flip the ribbon back and I'm gonna run the glue down the shirt right where I want the ribbon to lay on the shirt. Then you're gonna fold the ribbon right back over that glue and lay it right where you want it to lay and then you're just gonna run your hand across it to press the ribbon into the glue and repeat. And it's okay if you're pressing the ribbon into the glue and the glue is coming through the ribbon. When the glue dries, it will turn clear so you won't see the glue. And as you can see here, in no particular order or fashion, I just glued a bunch of strips to the shirt. And then now I'm gonna take my glue and I'm going to apply the glue to the back of this one little strip and I'm going to apply it to my sleeve. And yes, I do have another piece of plastic in between the two layers of that sleeve. So you're just gonna place it right above the seam and press it right into the fabric. And then you'll just let this sit and dry for about an hour and you will have a Halloween shirt. Now here is a look at all of our shirts now that they are all done and finished. How cute are these? And ooh, look at that black shirt. This is my favorite one. I absolutely love, 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 love that one. So whether you have a cutting machine or not, <laughs> you have no excuse not to have a cute Halloween shirt for the season. And y'all, this shirt is low key becoming one of my favorites as well. And this shirt actually would be super cute if it was made with like the little caution strips. So hint, hint, I did for you guys to make your shirts. So thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope this video was able to help you out. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share and make them DIY Halloween shirts. Bye.